What we're going to do in this video is go over the Worship Extreme interface. And we're just going to give a quick overview of everything. And in the following video, we will go over more detailed items in Worship Extreme. So let's go ahead and get started. So as you can see here on Worship Extreme, this is our main screen. And at the top where you see the Worship Extreme um, button here, this is going to act as our home button. So if we ever went to something else and we want to go back to our home, just go ahead and click on Worship Extreme and that will bring you back to this front start page. All right, this circle with the X, that is going to be your cancel button to where you can remove certain things. If we click on that, we can clear all. This will remove your foreground and your background, or you can selectively pick which one you want to clear. So right now, click clear all. On this side of the screen, this is your active queue list. This is kind of like your playlist of all the activities that you have set up to be played through Worship Extreme, to be displayed on your screen, your monitor, your projector, your live screen, stream, whichever one you're outputting to. Here at the bottom here, this is your small little mini um, display screen. This is if you do not have two monitors set up, you can see um, what the output would look like. So if I click on this, as you can see, this is what will show up. Now, I have multiple monitors set up. I actually have three monitors set up. So mine is going to look a little bit different, and you don't necessarily need this. But this is, um, if you're only running this from a laptop or a desktop with only one monitor, and then, and then another monitor is going out to your projector or your output, this is a nice little tool to at least give you an idea of what's going on. All right. So going back to that first button, we're going to go ahead and click clear all to get rid of that. Around the bottom here, you have your slider here to change the size of everything that's on your screen. Me personally, I try and put as much on here as possible. So I'll put it about right here. All right. All right. So now let's go to the top. So we already did our clear button. This next button here is your cue list. If we click on this. This is where it will have a history of all your cues, as well as where you can make new ones, add tags, um, all this other fun stuff, sorted by date, alphabetical order, anything. So right now I just have a test one that we'll be working through. All right, our next button is our lyrics. This is where if you had a um, CCLI license, you can link this and import different songs if you have access to song select which I do not, um, so I won't be doing it this way. This is your database of the songs that you currently have. So in subsequent videos, I will go through a adding new songs the, the manual way. And um, hopefully I'll have access to another the CCLI and song style, song select account, so I can show you what happens when you can import from here as well. So if you ever want to make a new song, you can click here, import, and make templates, and all of these items we will be talking about um, in follow-up videos. Now our next screen is slides, similar to lyrics, but these are slides that you've made inside here. These could be presentations, um, a little hack you can do. You can actually use this for lower thirds for your choirs, your pastor, your speakers, um, any type of things that you want. And we'll go over how to do that as well. Next, we have our media library. So we can go to our library. These are all of the items that we have imported. And you can sort this. Um, you have your name. You can type and search for it if you wanted to. You can sort by the type, size, modified. So this is mainly the library here. And then you also have a link to the media store, which um, we'll talk about later. Actually, um, CMG Create, you can get some free backgrounds if you go to their website, or you can purchase packets from them that they release monthly. And that's all under here. Now, the next feature we have are polls. Now, I'm going to actually delete this. 
this is one of the um, higher tier functions that are built into Worship Extreme. So just to let you know, if you got the free account, you would not have access to this, but I will still go through that. And this is where you can make polls and um, you can poll questions to your congregation or whoever is looking at the screen. Um, send them out to a web page. They click on it and, and, and dynamically it will show the results on follow up screen. And we'll talk about that as well later. All right. Uh, next are countdowns. So you can do a countdown timer um, for whatever time that you want. Countdown to a set number. Countdown to a specific time. Count up. You can have control of font templates and a bunch of other things as well here. Our next button is alerts. Similarly, you can place alerts here to, to be displayed on the screen. Um, for example, um, somebody left their lights on in the parking lot or, uh, you know, a parent needs to be notified of their child um, in a different area of the church. You can do that here. Then you also have access to connect this to Twitter and you can import um, your Twitter feed and display that on the screen as well too. And we'll be talking about that in further features as well, further videos as well. And then you just have your global search that you can pretty much search for anything in here. All right, and then our next screen over here is our display setup. As I said, I have three monitors set up. The first monitor is the one that you're seeing right here. And actually, let me put something on the screen so y'all can actually see how this actually works. So from here, what y'all are seeing right now is my screen number one. Screen and put something on here so y'all can actually see. Screen number two is what will be considered the output to our projectors or TVs or anything like that. And then screen number three, which again is another option of one of the higher tiers um, of Worship Extreme, is our stage display. So this will be a customized display that only people on, say your choir, um, preacher, announcers, or whatever, um, this is the only thing that they will be able to see. And all of that is control from up here. You can turn it off, on, set which screen. I can reverse these screens if I wanted to. Um, and I believe as many screens as you have hooked up will be displayed. Um, I have the ability on my computer to have five displays, but I only have two, well, three connected right now. So I would assume that you could have multiple displays as well. Um, I might have to try that in a later video. All right, and then under the gear, you have your sync, which will sync everything to the cloud. So you could actually make configurations at home. If you install this on your home computer, go to your church, log into the same account, and it will sync. I don't remember off the top of my head the size limit, but let's check that out. All right, so based on... If we go here to Worship Extreme, as you can see, um, you have Free Forever is the free tier. You have 50 megabytes of cloud storage and up to 10 queues that you can have, um, 10 queue lists, 10 queues, excuse me, 10 queues per list. So that would be 10 items in each list. Um, the pro level is $15 a month and you have five gigs of storage, unlimited queue items in your list you can use, oh, that's the other thing I didn't mention. The free plan requires that you have an internet access um, to run this. The pro level is $15 a month, have all the features, but you have five gigs of storage, unlimited queues and a list, so you can have as many as you want. You can use it offline without internet access. You get the stage display, and you have, have access to the apps that can control the remote and stage display. And then the pro um, plus level is the one that I'm using um, that Worship Extreme um, blessed me with is we have the same thing but we have 50 gigs of storage all the other features but you also have simultaneous sessions so you can have multiple people run this at the same time and you have access to polls 
both of those are the feature difference. And there's some other things that you have in here as well too, but we'll be going back over that in another time. All right, you have your settings in here where you can set up your default stuff for everybody, how defaultly what your lyrics will go out to, what's the um, slide format, four by three, 16 by nine, what's the delay between changing slides, your Bible template, your default Bible, that you're going to go to, which you can purchase ones or you can find them online and install them here. And I will do that in a follow up video as well. Other configurations you have here. Do you want to include the scripture reference? Do you want to insert a blank slide before songs or scriptures? Do you want to have a title slide? Do you automatically want to launch when you start something? Um, a slide like you. Um, for your background video and images, do you want them to scale to full screen, keep original, stretch to fit? Do you want to loop if you're doing a video? Do you want it to loop in the background? And then upload media to your cloud um, that you have locally. And honestly, um, I'm going to check this off since my plan says I have 50 gigs. So I will do that. Then you also have, also have your copyright footer. If you have a CCLI license, you know, we'll put this here and you can change where you want it to be located in the format. Your interface, you can change this to default, which is white or in dark. I like it dark right now. And then how many default items in your media gallery do you see on one screen at a time? I have that at 20. Your screen configuration is what I was showing you in this menu here, but it's just a bigger one. Show preview in the bottom left. This is what this is. So if I turn that off, that goes away. Um, and again, if you don't have multiple monitors, you would probably want to leave this on. But again, I have multiple monitors right here in front of me. Um, then you can set which display that you want. Turn them off if you want. Um, that's mainly about it. See, this is exactly how my monitors are set up on my desk right now. All right, then we go to library and databases. You can set where you want um, these directories to be at. Um, when do you want to do a database sync? And other things, you can change this and point it anywhere you want to. Under Bibles, you can purchase new Bibles here if you wanted to. Um, let me log into my account here. You can add new Bibles here if you wanted to. Um, or you, if you find XML versions of the Bible, which you just got to do a Google search and you can do, you can import the Bible there. And for example, I think I have one. Now, like I said, I have to do that in another video. All right, and then you have your cash. You can clear this out if need be. And that's pretty much about it. So that's the basis of the layout of everything. And um, oh, and here on the latest queue list, this is the area of all your queues that you've used recently. I don't recall how many are gonna be displayed here, but this is your most frequently, um, most recently used queue list will be displayed here. So I, Hope that helped, guys. And like I said, there's going to be some more follow-up videos to go in more in-depth with each one of the features that I mentioned. So this is AJ. You just want to catch back up with me and check out the follow-up videos. Um, you know. Just want to say thanks, y'all, for stopping by. And, you know, look out for my other videos. And, um one thing I would like, if this is your first time, if you like this type of content, just make sure you go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And then also you check off the, the bell so you get notified when we have new videos. And again, we're going to go through every feature here in Worship Extreme to get you up to speed if you want to use this product in your church. All right, this is AJ. We'll catch you later.